Welcome back to another Wednesday edition of Walk and Talk, in which I'll be answering questions about me. I've not done a video that was just devoted to me. I've answered questions sporadically throughout uh, my videos that were about myself and my background and blah blah blah. But I haven't really devoted an entire video just to me. So today I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna devote this video just to me. I don't know if you noticed, but the cherry blossoms are gone. It literally lasted until last weekend. And it was the last weekend. And surprisingly enough, there was no rain. Usually for the past, I don't know how many years, cherry blossoms were basically knocked down um, first or the second re week because of the rain. The rains that used to come. So in today's episode I'll be answering a bunch of questions uh, about myself. I found them up on the internet. There are 26 questions all together and I'll be going through them and answering them in a very quick succession. Question 1. Do you have any brothers? I have a cousin. We basically grew up uh, referring to each other as brothers. And uh, for the longest time that was it. We were brothers. I had no idea what a cousin was until later on in life when I reached the maturity of understanding the appropriate vocabulary for different uh, segments of your family. So even to this day we're still referring to each other as brothers, but we're actually cousins. So technically I don't have a brother, but I do have somebody who, who is as close to a brother as anybody can get in a family. Question two, do you have any sisters? No, I don't. Question three. What is your favorite food? That I would have to say... Actually, it's hard to say. It used to be budagi hejanguk, which is a Korean dish, and it's made of uh, pork spine. It's, it's a pork-based soup. It's spicy, it's got vegetables, it's got meat, and it's very savory. It's very delicious. Uh, it's been my favorite since I came to Korea. Question number four. What kind of phone do you have? Right now I'm using the uh, Galaxy S7. I've had Apple. The first smartphone I ever got was an Apple. It was Apple II, I think. It was a second generation. And I really enjoyed it. I did a lot of hacking with it. I downloaded Cydia and it served me well for about two years. And then I switched over to an Android phone and holy cow, the world opened up. Right now, I probably would never go back to, to an, uh, an Apple phone simply because I really do enjoy the, the freedom that an Android phone affords. I'm looking at the Galaxy S10 these days simply for the fact that they're equipped with like three cameras facing outward, which means good things for video shooting quality. And since I use my phone for videos, you know, that's good. Question number five. Do you speak any other languages? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I speak Polish, German, English, minimal Korean, and a few words of Japanese, a few funny words of Spanish. And I guess if push came to shove, I could make my way through some of the Eastern European countries like the Czech Republic, because it carries a lot of similarities to Polish and Bulgaria, uh, which I visited with my wife, we lived in Turkey um, and we did make a few stopovers in Sofia and I was able to navigate my way at the market using Polish. So Polish and Bulgarian do carry some of the, some, I guess, linguistic similarities. I usually, if people ask me that very question, I say, yes, I do. I speak three languages, Polish, German, and English. And here's a tip for any who are learning languages particularly English in, in this day and age. Um, if you do speak a language, make sure that you keep it up. Uh, I spoke fluent German when I was a kid. Literally, Germans would look at me. They had no idea that I wasn't German because of the, my hair color and my eye color. You know, it's pretty fair. And I spoke German in a way that led people to believe that I was a German kid, which I never was. Um, but over the years, due to the fact that I have not used German at all, I never use it in my daily life. It basically disintegrated into, I don't know, went from like 100% efficiency in my speaking German to maybe about 40% efficiency in my spoken German. I do understand some words and it, uh, whenever I hear a new word, it clicks. I know I knew it and the connection is just not there anymore. So 
It'd just be a matter of using it again and I guess I would be able to recall it. Languages do disintegrate into forgetfulness. Question six. What's the weirdest thing you eat? I don't know if that was a spelling mistake. The weirdest thing you eat or the weir weirdest thing. That's a hard word to say. Weirdest thing you have ever eaten. So let's go with the one that way, the, with the question the way it's phrased. What's the weirdest thing you eat? I don't know. My cuisine is pretty normal. There's a tulip festival going on here at the park. Okay, the weirdest thing I eat. There's a thing I used to eat when I was a kid. It's an addition to cake, to a cake. You, s you take an egg and you separate the egg whites from the egg yolk. You throw away the egg white, you keep the egg yolk. You add about, to one egg yolk, you add about two teaspoons of sugar and you mix it. You either use a fork, a spoon, and stir it in a cup, or if you have a mixer, a blender, not a blender, then you can mix the egg yolk with sugar until it's frothy and smooth. It doesn't have to be frothy, but smooth. And then you can eat it. It's a fabulous dessert. I loved it when I was a kid. I tried giving it to my kids and they kind of I twisted their faces at it. I guess that's what happens. When I was a kid, sugar was very scarce. There were very few candies around and uh, so kids grabbed a hold of anything that was sugary and nice. And so that was one of the things. My mom did a lot of baking at home and uh, made cakes and cookies and stuff like that. And this was one of the things that was left over on the, on the forks or whatever. So I guess that's what I would say would be the weirdest thing that I eat. We're skipping seven for various reasons. Number eight. What's your favorite hobby? Right now my favorite hobby is this. This is my favorite hobby. I've had many hobbies in the past. I guess if I had to choose, if I had the time, it would be rock climbing. I used to rock climb all the time. I love it, it's a fantastic sport. I recommend anybody uh, who's ever thought about trying it should try it. It's a sport that I find people either love or hate. There's no happy medium. There's no, I've never seen a person try and climb and go, it's not bad. People either say, wow, this was fantastic, or no, I will not do it again. There's no happy medium. You love it or hate it, check out the tulips. They're like these massive balloons you can stand in and take a photo. Koreans love doing that. You have like a photo zone. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Spring is a good time for taking kindergartners out. On a warm day like today, you'll see a lot of uh, kindergarten classes out and about. Gotta get the kitties out. You can be stuck in a kindergarten all day long. That's just bad. Nine, what's your favorite subject in school? My favorite subject in school was phys ed. I had absolutely no inclination, no desire to study anything else. During my uni years, psychology. My first year at the university, I, I entered uni without any understanding of what I wanted to do. I was completely green, I had no idea. The University of Manitoba has a first year program uh, during which students have to take uh, topics from five different areas of uh, academics. And psychology is a mandatory course during the first year. I guess it allows students to figure out what the heck they want to do with the rest of their lives and gives people kind of a chance to think about their academic future. The first year of psychology basically uh, turned me on to psychology. I sat in a class, I listened to the prof and literally I knew this was my calling. This is what I wanted to study. And that's what I did study. Question number 10, how old are you? Well, it was my birthday just a week ago, April 1st, and I believe I have turned 43. According to the Korean standards, I am a couple years older than that, but I don't really count that because it's silly. Who makes themselves purposely older? Born in 1975, now it's 2019. I'm officially 43 years old and 44 ongoing. But in my heart, I'm still 18. Question 11, where do you see yourself in five years from now? That is a question I never knew how to answer. Never really liked, because it's too far in the future. But if I had to say, I see myself fabulously happy and fabulously rich in that order. First happy, then rich. There's no point of being rich if you're not happy. In terms of uh, geographic positioning, phew, wherever life takes me, whatever is comfortable. I hope to be out of Korea, quite frankly. Um, still have roots in here, clearly, because my family is still here. My kids were born here, my wife is Korean. But I hope to be living somewhere else um, and be. I hope to be able to um, be visiting Korea to manage 
business as it is. Question number 12, what's your favorite color? My favorite color is red, burgundy-ish red. Question number 13, what's the best job you've ever had? The best job I've ever had was working for McDonald's Youth Services in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I've had a lot of jobs and I mean like a lot. I've worked in casinos, I've worked in constructions, I've delivered pizzas, I've made pizzas. I delivered newspapers, I've cleaned banks, I've fixed roofs on buildings. My last job before leaving Canada was working in a youth care facility. I worked in a half home um, with underprivileged children. They were mostly boys, exclusively boys, um, who were basically too young to go to jail. The boys were aged 14 to 17. You know, they were in trouble with the law in one capacity or another. And my job and the job of other social uh, service workers was the daily activities. We had to manage the house. The boys lived in there. It was an assessment unit, so three months, the, most of the boys stayed for three months and then uh, a decision was made on whether to place them in a foster home, foster care, or if they were, were uh, to be returned to their homes. In some cases, that was impossible to do. I had to take the boys to school, uh, sometimes there was cooking, I didn't do a lot of the cooking, there were other staff who were a lot more in tune, you know, people who worked there for a lot longer. I engaged the, the, the boys in activities, we had a PlayStation which we were allowed to, the boys were allowed to use occasionally. And just interacting with the kids was good. I've met some, some of these kids came from really troubled backgrounds and they were fantastic kids and it was, you know, that job was right along the lines of uh, my psychology um, major in the university but retrospectively uh, it's kind of heartbreaking to see these some of these kids came from homes that were abusive um, or just malfunctioning in some other ways but these kids were like they had dreams I remember one boy in particular who was a native kid um, and he had aspirations he wanted to be a lawyer uh, and he wanted to do stuff with himself and he had you know he had dreams and hopes but he came from a background that was just really unhealthy but to see him still being able to look ahead and thrive you know it was very like retrospectively when i think about it it was kind of inspiring and i really hope that he did manage to make something of himself because he was a cool kid man so yeah, that was the best job that I've ever had, I think. Hmm. 14, what's the worst job you've ever had? There was no worst job. Every single job that I did kind of afforded me a new piece of experience. I could tell you what the hardest job was, and that would be working on roofs. I've spent three months uh, roofing, and it was one of the toughest jobs I've ever done. The people who do it for a living for years and years, man, that kind of work breaks your body. It breaks your back. Um, it's really tough. So would I do it again? Not unless I really had to. <laughs> Question 15, what sports do you play? Right now, zero. <laughs> it's really bad. I'm trying to get back into the gym to get back into shape. Uh, but man, there's only 24 hours a day that I have. I gotta figure that out somehow. Question 16, would you rather live in a city or the country? Definitely, without a doubt, countryside. I'll let him sit around. Yeah, countryside, 100%, doesn't matter where I am. I would always choose countryside, to be away from the noise from the city. Jigyong just called, we're on a move. We're gonna go to a tea shop. Another video coming up. So that's gonna be either Friday or, or the weekend. I'm gonna rush to get back home. Uh, because time is of essence, see? Question 17, what kind of music do you like? Recently I've been enjoying kind of uh, instrumental music, quiet stuff. Not necessarily quiet, but instrumental. One of my favorite bands right now is OK Go. If you haven't had a chance to listen to them, to catch them yet, man, get into it, because these guys are phenomenal artists. I like their music and especially their videos. They're really creative guys. OK Go, check them out. Question 18, what kind of movies do you like? Favorite kind, I would say, sci-fi or fantasy. Question 19, what's your favorite vacation? One where I don't have to think too much. Question 20, what places have you lived in? Poland, Germany, Turkey, England, and Korea, Japan. 21, what countries have you visited? Well, in addition to the ones that I've lived in, I've also visited Bulgaria, Russia, Italy, Thailand, Cambodia. But these are the ones that pop into my head right now as I rush to get back home to the car. Question 22, do you have any animals? Yes, I have a dog, a little Maltese, and a few fish. One just died today, a little goldfish. 
very sad day for Molly. Question 23, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Um, yogurt. Question 24, what's your zodiac? I'm an Aries. Question 25, have you ever had surgery? Yes, I've had my tonsils removed. I had surgery on my pinky finger because it was broken and it needed wiring. I guess if you want to count Liam's surgery last year, I was present, I witnessed it, I saw the doctor set his bone and it was almost like I was getting the bone set. Those memories will be stuck with me for the rest of my life, I think, man. Every time I think of it, I cringe seeing Liam comatose, half comatose and like jumping out of his uh, anesthetic induced coma, um, waking up because of the pain that it caused him when, a, when the doctor was adjusting his bone, his, uh, the screaming, it'll stay with me forever, even to this day. It's a year later and still sometimes when I remember, I cringe. Funny thing is, Liam, Liam doesn't even remember. Literally, sometimes he looks at his arms and he asks me, Daddy, which arm was broken? <laughs> I always tell him, baby, look for the scars on your arm. Oh, okay, he says. Question 26. Last question. Who's your favorite YouTuber? I don't have just one. There is a couple for different reasons. Casey Neistat, because he's Casey Neistat. I started watching Casey Neistat because uh, somebody mentioned him in a in a live show, live podcast of somebody else's YouTube channel. And I went to look him up and I really enjoyed his videos. And while his videos are great, when you look at Casey's life, it's really inspiring. Um, you know, he's not a YouTuber that happened overnight. He worked at it for many years. And he is where he is because he put in the work and he put in the time. And he's very accomplished as an individual, as a movie maker. His positiveness is also infectious. Uh, I don't know. I think even off camera, he seems to be a very positive dude. That's great, man. Oftentimes I wish I was as positive as he is. I think I'm a positive dude, but he drives it to extremes. The other YouTuber that I enjoy watching is uh, Serpenza. ZA. Serpenza. And I think it's basically because he's kind of closely positioned to myself. He's a YouTuber, he's a South African YouTuber who's uh, based out of China and he's been living there for like the past 14 C. Kitty Skinner Gardens walking around the park because it's nice. Um. <laughs> Serpenza has been uh, living in China for the past 14 years. Just recently, China has been grinding him hard for the content that he's making. Funny thing is he's not bad mouthing China. He's just pointing out some of the shitty things that people do and hope that, you know, these things change. But there's a group of Chinese hardcore knobs, uh, patriots, and try to say that he's, you know, that he's slandering China. When he's not. Chinese uh, people who, who like him, who agree with him. And so these, this small group of individuals that is trying to get rid of him is just, they're like these pathetic leftovers from the communist era that are trying to push their mindless agenda onto the world still. It's really sad. Five minutes, gotta go. This concludes the Q&A. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell button and the notifications. And I'll see you on Friday.